guys so I'm gonna pray in the Holy Spirit this morning I might pray a little bit in English as well um, if God gives me uh, the interpretation to my tongues this morning but for the most part just gonna be praying in tongues um, you know the Word of God says to pray always in the Spirit um, praying in English eventually we run out of things to say or we don't know what to say or what to pray so praying in the spirit will edify your spirit man if you're struggling with your emotions that's your flesh that's your soul that means you're 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 struggling with soul turmoil and so a good way to help bring that back into alignment with the spirit of god is by praying in the spirit of god praying always in the holy ghost so that's what we're going to do this morning and that is available to everyone who believes the bible says all who believe will speak with new tongues and they will cast out demons so every believer has the commission and has been given the green light the authority the power to cast out demons and to speak with new tongues according to Mark 16, 17. Amen. So let's pray. If you feel like you are being oppressed, if you are under spiritual attack, if you are under a spirit of poverty, a spirit of confusion, depression, oppression, then we need to pray in the spirit. Um, I want to share real quick how I received the my prayer language. How I received my prayer language to pray in tongues in the Holy Spirit. I didn't receive it because it just started busting out of my mouth. I didn't receive it that way. What I did is I saw the scripture. Do you know that you can search the scriptures, find a scripture, and then stand on it? You can believe it with all your heart, and it will manifest through your belief. You can do that. So if you take Mark 16, 17, that all believers will speak with new tongues, all who believe will speak with new tongues, then you will speak with new tongues, just like I believed and spoke with new tongues. I began to pray. I began to babble. It sounded like babble. That's what it was. I began to open my mouth and say vowels sounds. I started to say vowel sounds, and it sounded like, Babel. It sounded kind of like nonsense, but you know what? I stood on the word of God. I stood with all my faith, with all my heart on the word of God, and I began to pray in tongues. And soon my tongues began to really sharpen up, and they began to get more diverse. Um, I began for the first time six months in. I'm, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit having to fight my carnal mind the whole time always saying this is stupid you look foolish you look like an idiot you're not doing anything this is not of god all those thoughts running constantly through my carnal mind and i'm just like hard-headed i'm standing on faith i'm speaking and praying in the spirit i need this to help me war and so i continue to do so and after six months, I received my first interpretation of my tongues through the Holy Spirit. And I realized that I had spoke a phrase in Swahili. So I was able to translate it through a translating, um, through, through Google, I translated the word in, from Swahili into English. And it meant to, to go against or war against principalities or demonic heads. So that was all the confirmation I needed. I was not gonna let up, I was not gonna stop, I was gonna continue to pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so many other things happened from that point on. I began to interpret my tongues more often. I began to um, sing in the Spirit. I began to intercede and hear God direct my tongues and direct my prayer and give me prophetic words to release 
give me prophetic revelation, um, give me uh, things to preach all through praying in the spirit. I would pray in tongues and while I'm praying in tongues, I can hear in my mind what God is saying. So I'm able to then relay that to myself or relay that to the body of Christ. So, so we need to get outside of our judgmental, critical, prideful, um, lack of knowledge mindsets. Um, there is a knowledge that comes from reading the scriptures and there's revelation knowledge that comes from experiential knowledge of the scriptures and experiential knowledge is always going to trump just reading the scriptures yet you don't have any experience you haven't experienced those scriptures you've only read them and now you're trying to teach preach on something you haven't even experienced and we know that in the world experience people pay for experience if you are um, trying to get a job and you have no experience you know they're probably gonna hire the person with experience because there's nothing um, that is greater than experience you can study for the test you can study the information all day every day but it's a different thing when you actually have hands-on experience, um, you, you would want a surgeon that has hands-on experience, right? You wouldn't want somebody to come do surgery on you that never, like, yeah, they, they, they have done tests, they have done studies, they've been in school, but they've never once done a surgery. You know, would you really think?